Auto focus is for suckers. Yeah, I said it. All right, I'm just kidding. But if you're like me and you had never shot without autofocus before, it might scare the pants off you at the idea of going without it. You might be hearing people constantly talk about autofocus and how much it has truly advanced in the past few years, especially on cameras like the one that I use, the Sony FX3. So if I have a camera that has one of the best autofocus systems out there today, you might be asking me, why did I choose to spend the past year and a half shooting with cinema lenses that don't have autofocus? Well, let's break it down. As someone who started off as strictly a photographer without shooting videos, I got really used to modern lenses that have great autofocus built into them. And whether or not you also got started this way or just went straight into shooting video, there's a good chance you also started using lenses like these. I think it's safe to say that whenever looking online for the best video shooting starter kits, it always starts with something like a mirrorless camera and a 24-70mm autofocus lens. And now don't get me wrong, there's absolutely nothing wrong with starting off with a kit like that. And there's actually nothing wrong with using something like that indefinitely as well. But these lenses are typically meant for taking photos that just also happen to be able to shoot video as well. So if you've ever tried to manually focus one of these kinds of lenses before, you'll notice that the focus ring very easily turns and will continue to rotate infinitely. This can make manually focusing quite difficult and challenging, and it's just too easy to turn the focus ring, making it quite hard to nail your focus. But let's take it back to the simple question of why would you actually want to manually focus in the first place and ultimately use the cinema lens? Well, it all comes down to two things, control and the overall look of your image. All cinema lenses, whether budget ones or super expensive ones, are all only manual focus lenses as they provide better control for what you want to capture. Manually focusing really allows a filmmaker to choose exactly what they want to be in focus, as well as being able to choose to switch focus from one thing to another in your frame. This can be very crucial for storytelling, so it's an important aspect of filmmaking that has been this way for a very long time. Also, typically cinema lenses have a much farther focus throw, meaning it takes a lot longer to move from one focus point to the other when rotating the focus frame. This really helps smooth the transition between your focus points. On top of this, cinema lenses are typically de-clicked when it comes to aperture control. So if you need to control your exposure while filming, you can adjust the aperture ring smoothly, which won't cause unnecessary shakes and jitters. Now getting to the overall look. People are always talking about nailing that cinematic film-like look. But what they're actually talking about is recreating the looks of films shot on actual film with cinema lenses. Now yes, the film stock that was used plays a huge part in how the images look, but the lenses used to shoot a lot of the popular films we would have seen growing up also plays a huge part in how they look. A lot of these lenses had imperfections such as lens flares, blooming of the highlights, elation, and an overall softer look, as well as some interestingly but beautifully rendered bokeh, which really makes up the cinematic film look everyone talks about. And these are all pretty much fully removed from most modern autofocus lenses today, which is why people tend to say they produce a much more digital clinical look. Patrick Tommaso did a great video on dirtying up your frame and how films like The Batman basically had a dirtied up frame for the entire film. This makes the images look much more organic and really helps suck you into what you're watching, making you feel like you're right in there and a part of the action. So using some cinema lenses that have some character will really help get you that type of image. So that takes me to which cinema lenses I've decided to go with. I've gone with the SLR Magic Micro Prime Cine lens lineup for multiple reasons, but let's start with the technical stuff. As expected from cinema lenses, these lenses are housed in a cinema grade metal exterior with matching dimensions and focus and iris gear positioning, and a lens ring marked in T-stops rather than F-stops like photo lenses have. They are equipped with internal focusing, which is a must for using a map box as the outside of the lenses won't be moving when focusing. Although the focus ring only rotates 150 degrees due to the smaller size of these lenses, that is still more than enough to get smooth, accurate focus pulling, especially when compared to a photography lens. These lenses also have full frame coverage, which are great for using on cameras like the Sony a7S III and the FX3, and come in a wide variety of focal lengths with an 82mm front filter thread. They also come both in E-mount, MFT, and X-mount. And coming in at a price point of $599 US per lens, these lenses are a steal. Oh, and before I move on, I just want to mention that this video is not sponsored by SLR Magic. It's not in collaboration with them. I fully purchased my lenses for myself, so I'm just telling you how much I truly love these lenses. Because I love them. All right, but now you're probably thinking, enough talk. Just show me exactly why these lenses are so great and why they're worth giving up autofocus for. That's probably what you care most about, right? Since the spring of 2021, I've really been able to use these lenses on a variety of use cases, and it really helps show me how versatile these lenses can actually be. They have a very naturalistic and organic feel with a few of those imperfections I mentioned earlier. Sometimes you might notice a bit of chromatic aberration in areas of high contrast, as well as a bit of halation, but it really depends on the lighting conditions when shooting and how much direct light is coming into the lenses. They produce beautiful colors as well as a soft and smooth highlight and shadow roll off and beautifully rendered bokeh and flaring. The flares don't look like those typical flares of photography lenses. They have much more character and style to them without being over the top. They also produce sharp enough images to use in most settings, but still have this overall softness to them, which really helps reduce that harsh digital look. And you could always pair it with a black pro mist filter to really soften up that image and get that beautiful film-like look. Although none of these lenses in this set are macro lenses, they do have quite a close minimum focus distance, 
and when combined with a macro adapter, you can really get good close-up shots. So after hearing all of these points, you still might be wondering, is this really important for me and my cinematography? Well, from a convenience standpoint, it still might seem like grabbing one of those 18 to 35 millimeter or 24 to 70 millimeter autofocus lenses might be the best overall option since they're seemingly more versatile. If your lenses can reduce your work for you by just tracking absolutely everything for you, isn't that more important than all the other factors combined? Well, in an increasingly competitive field, being able to produce work that will stand out will become much more important. And just using any old fast autofocus photography lens won't give you that. And contrary to what you might think, after practicing manually focusing for a bit, you will absolutely get the hang of it before you know it, and you won't even consider that as extra work. But having all the other qualities that cinema lenses have to offer will be much more important to you in the long run, and will really make your work stand out. There's a reason cinema lenses exist, and $25,000 and $50,000 ones for that matter. And again, that's not to say you need one of those crazy expensive ones, especially not as an indie solo shooter filmmaker, and especially not if you're just starting out. But you can absolutely get all the benefits of shooting with cinema lenses by getting a budget set, like the ones from SLR Magic. Now, speaking of not just going with conveniences and what you are used to, or what you hear everybody else talking about that they should do, and taking a chance to commit to things that will make me and my work look more professional, I just want to take a quick moment to shout out the sponsor for today's video, and that is Cuts Clothing. For the longest time, whenever I wanted new clothes, I would just go to cheap stores, get things that looked good, but that really weren't high quality, and that weren't going to be good for me in the long run. But after being introduced to the clothes from Cuts, I realized there were clothes out there that were still stylish, and would make me look more professional, but had a lasting quality to them. I've been wearing Cuts Clothing for as long as I've been using my set of cinema lenses, and I can confidently say that as a filmmaker and content creator, they're some of the most comfortable, stylish, and professional looking clothes I've owned. This is why I'm proud to announce I'm officially a Cuts Ambassador. I don't ever recommend anything that I don't personally use and love, and my clothes are no different. And that's why I can safely say, if you're anything like me, you'll find their offering has something for every use case. From tees and hoodies for when you need to be comfortable filming on location, to polos and joggers for when you need to look professional and sharp during client meetings, Cuts has a huge offering. And with their recently released pants, you can get an even more professional and formal look. So I know it might seem more convenient to just grab some cheap clothes every now and then when you need them, but committing to a better, more professional offering has made me more comfortable and confident in my work and personal life. Just like committing to using cinema lenses. So if you want to check out Cuts Clothing for yourself, head over to the link in the description down below and you'll save 15% off your entire order. So now by this point, you're probably still thinking, hey Alex, are you really trying to tell me to completely ditch my autofocus lenses? Well, not exactly. There are definitely use cases for autofocus, especially with all the recent advancements for the technology. If you're shooting something like running on documentaries or events like a wedding or even YouTube videos like this, autofocus and specifically face detect autofocus will be a huge asset to you. You can literally draw a box around a face and it'll just keep that in focus no matter where it moves in the frame. That's pretty mind blowing. But again, sometimes not having the most perfect focusing can actually look good in your shot. And there really is nothing wrong with missing focus a bit and having to rack focus back. That can just add a much more organic and natural feel to your films. And it can even encourage you to get a little more creative. Always relying on autofocus can make you very comfortable and keep you from thinking outside of the box. So I think learning manual focus will ultimately help make you a better filmmaker. No, it's not gonna turn you into Martin Scorsese or anything, but I think it will enable you to really hone your craft and get more creative while taking more risks. And sometimes I just think using autofocus lenses can really keep things looking stale. There's something a little off-putting about how perfect and sharp those images can look. I think part of this has to do with the fact that everyone has a smartphone in their pocket nowadays and is getting used to the whole iPhone video look. And although tons of people highly praise cameras on the iPhone, I really can't stand the look of the videos that are taken on them. I know it might sound like a daunting task to just completely stop relying on autofocus and go full manual, but I think it's one of the most important ways you can add your own stamp to your videos and your films. I like to equate it to something like painting a picture. You as a filmmaker are like a painter, painting your image with your vision for the world to see. Now imagine telling that vision to someone else who is holding the paintbrush for you. Imagine telling them where exactly to put the paintbrush on the canvas, what type of brush stroke to do, where to paint it, how to do it. Now I'm sure sometimes they will get the type of brush stroke you want, put it in the place that you want to, and ultimately get kind of what you're looking for. But I'd say more often than not, it's gonna be their take on what you are telling them. It's not gonna be fully what you're trying to do. It's not gonna be fully getting your vision out there on that canvas because you're relying on them to do it for you. Committing to shoot manual focus would be like removing that paintbrush from their hand and you painting it yourself. Now, I know that might sound like a silly analogy, but I really do think it is another way of truly adding your own personal touch and your own stamp to your work. We should always be striving to add our true creative expression to our work and although not every piece of content you create will necessarily be able to be your most creative or your finest work or your Sistine Chapel, but it's still a small way of being able to add a bit of that back into even the driest of your work. 
So after all is said and done, I know it might be easy to just use autofocus as a crutch and rely on it for everything, but taking that scary step to commit to a cinema lens or a lens system that is fully manual will truly push you and your work to another level. It is my biggest takeaway from the past year and a half only shooting on cinema lenses. Before that, I had strictly used autofocus lenses, but I knew I wanted to challenge myself when buying my FX3 and get a set of lenses that would elevate my work and make me better at what I do. It wasn't easy, and at times I thought I was crazy for just diving in, but looking back now, I know I made the right call. So if the idea of ditching autofocus and committing to manual focus cinema lenses scares you, that's a good thing. Maybe you should lean into it. Take a chance. Let the magic happen. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. See you next time.